So let's get right into it. We played. I played this game once. I played it two times. Yep. Rise of Tribes came out in 2018. It's a board game. I think it was kickstarted. Maybe we played it at PAX. It's a game. It's uh, <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. It's okay. So the way I, I don't feel ever about need this to play game, it again. The way I feel about this game is it seems like someone like took or came up with and combined a bunch of okay to good to sometimes slightly clever game mechanics and mixed them up into a perfectly average generic board game that is so like run of the mill like, there's nothing exciting about it it seems just like every other you know euroish board game yep like there's nothing that stands out it's like you know you think about a board game that's really great and there's something about it that's like clever or different right like for example dominion basically invented deck building right t t and e was like aha your lowest points is the <laughs> ooh, right there's no ooh in rise of tribes it's literally just like yep take actions to get the most victory points on your turn i mean the, the rules were described and i looked at the board and i looked at what i had and i looked at the and a very small number of very direct heuristics immediately became apparent and everything beyond that was random or political yeah uh, so here's basically the way the game works is you put some dudes onto a hex map. You're trying to take over spaces. You're trying to do things. To get well, you you're trying to get points, and there's a bunch of ways to get points, but the default way is to build huts. Yep. And the huts give you every hut you have the gives you a point. gives you a point every turn. So you're trying to, it's sort of like settlers a little bit, right? It's imagine <laughs> it's a little like risk plus settlers. You get your guys on the board, take over some spaces. That way you can get some resources, use the resources to put huts on the spaces, yep. defend them. The huts spit out a point every turn, and eventually the first person to 15 points wins, a lot like settlers. Right. Uh, the two interesting mechanics in the game that I noticed that were like, you know, cool is number one is this dice thing going on. So on your turn, you want to take an action. There's four actions to choose from. Right. There's always going to be an action that you want to take the most, but each action has three dice on it. Two of them are sort of like locked in, and the third one is sort of like you know you roll right. So you you sort of roll one you. Oh, that's right. I remember now. It's been a few weeks. <laughs> you roll two dice and you take two actions, right? That's what it is. Yep. And every when you take an action, you put the die you rolled, which either has a sun, a moon, or nothing on it, into the spot of the action you took, displacing one of the dice that's already there. Right. So each action already has like three dice on it. So one of the actions might have like sun, sun, blank. So you put your dice in there. As, and kick out the oldest one, and it, you maybe of the three dice that are there, now that you've displaced one, maybe you've got sun blank sun, in which case you do the action slightly better. And maybe it'll be blank sun moon, all right, you do it normally. Oh, and that'll be moon moon, ah, you do the action slightly worse than normal, right? There's like three levels to each action, and it provides this randomness to where you can choose whatever action of the you can choose any two of the four actions you want yep, but you but, have to balance what you need to accomplish with right. what will you enable another player to do right based on what you do and what previous players have done what dice have been put in you might be doing actions slightly better or slightly worse so it's variance it's not huge variance it's not game swingy variance it's just a little bit of variance to mix things up which is pretty clever but it's also because it's so constrained it's not exciting. Well, because every interaction is hyper generic. So while there's a bunch of stuff that it's has like a lot dudes, of dudes, put lot more of, dudes out. But there's a lot of fun flavor text nonsense like, oh, the cougar or whatever, the mountain lion appears and he moves around the map beating people. It it's purely like the most minimal political remove a guy from whatever players in first place. Like it doesn't nothing does anything interesting. Everything just well, does these very like plus one, minus one political actions. I feel like whoever made this was like, all right, we got to put in randomness and fun to spice things up, but we don't want to put in too much because it's too swingy and the game becomes too luck-based. Like, yep. Settlers lets things be a little more luck-based, whereas this constrained all the luck into this narrow, controllable band, which is kind of okay for a competitive game, but what ends up happening is everything's so constrained and the, there's no skill testing way you know there's no difficult to figure out you know moves so everyone gets about the yep. same number of victory points every turn and progresses at about the same rate except and when i played the first time i got a ton more than everyone else because i just built a bunch of huts while you were all fucking around i tried to build some huts i built yeah. as many huts as i could 
Yep. Uh, each base, there's different players to choose from, different tribes. Each tribe needs a different recipe of resources to build a hut. Yep. And I, w- and I, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. All of the, I was like, I'm not picking one that needs three trees if anyone else has one that needs yep. three trees. Right? There's a little bit of that going on at the so start. So there's also a thing you can do where you can basically like unlock more advanced technology that gives you more powers. But again, super generic and super constrained. Yeah, you have this deck of cards... And you can spend one of the actions lets you flip over the cards to sort of and it's sort of like getting routes in Ticket to Ride, where you fl- you can flip you spend an action to get more routes, and then if you can fulfill them, they activate either giving you victory points or uh, giving you powers that like then enable basketry, you to get victory gather points. one additional resource per ha- so when I gather I get extra resources and it costs me two stone and a wood to build it and I guess it's worth a victory point right. Uh, the other thing is this is an event deck where if somebody rolls two identical symbols, you then start flipping over cards from the event deck, and that sort of adds, so, you know, it mixes things up. I like events. It's Except like, the events are all just politics, attack the player in charge, or attack someone on a particular hex. There like were some events that were like, okay, the next few players get, like, some extra resources. And yeah. The, but not, it's like... Or, like, they the were, barbarians come on the board and just do nothing. Yeah, the barbarians, like, fill up one space and clog it up. And in the two games I played, the barbarians came out, clogged up one space, and everyone just ignored that space the rest of the game the end. Yep. Right? It's, like, it's nice to spice things up with an event system of randomness, but there weren't enough different events, and the events weren't consequential enough that you actually had to do anything about that, right? Uh, it's It's sort of like, you know... You can have a game with no randomness. You have a game with a lot of randomness where then suddenly, you know, your decisions matter less, but at least it's crazy fun things happening. This tried to strike a balance between, all right, not too much randomness so things get mixed up, and, but it didn't have, a, there's not enough complex interwoven systems to make decision making difficult. So that little bit of randomness ends up being what matters. And, yep. But you lose out on the fun of randomness because nothing is extreme. Everything's tiny. And it ends up being, like, I think it's a good game for kids to sort of introduce them to more complex is, games. I do think this is actually a great game of, like, intro to, you know, Euro games in general. Maybe yep. even better than Settlers because... It, it has more interlocking mechanisms that are all themselves has, simpler. Like, all these basics, like, there are pieces from Ticket to Ride. There's dice rolling. There's things from Settlers. There's things from Risk. There's things from, you know... Uh, Small world. It's like there's it's, really good little pieces to stack, like right. the meeples and pieces. It's are like really gene- good. it's like the generic mechanics, you know, the fundamental mechanics of you know the the main Euro games of the world, sort of combined into one in a really flat kind of way. It could be exciting for someone who hasn't played tons of Euro games and seen all this before. Yep. Uh, but for anyone else, you know, looking for a hard game, looking for a complex game, looking for an exciting game. Yeah, because if, if you're skilled at games at all, the game just breaks down to being 100% purely political. Whoever's in, whatever event happens, just use it to hurt whoever's beating you as much as you can or help yourself and get the most points. Like yeah. there's, it's like, it's like one of those games where like, yeah, there's a map and you can go around attacking people if you want to. But it doesn't really get you anywhere, and it just costs you a lot. So everyone just sort of expands to do a bunch of hexes at the start, and then locks themselves in the end. Yep. As opposed to say Tempest, and I watch anyone Vinci who, where you're constantly anyone who tried to break people. out or fight just sort of petered out victory point wise. Yeah, because you lose all your dudes. Yep. And I literally won because people didn't attack me enough, so I just got no There's points. There's like a limit a number of dudes in a space. So you move all your dudes into a space and crowd someone out and try to kill them, and then you lose your dudes also. Yep. And now you have to spend an action, the, the most limited thing in the game, your actions, getting more dudes. Whereas if you had stayed put, you could have spent an action flipping over some cards that might have been worth points or getting some resources to build a hut that would have been worth points. I or... guess the, the other problem is that it's one of those games where there is nothing to do when it's not your turn. Oh, yeah. Nothing at all. At least people's turns are short because they're two actions, but I think it actually would have been better to just do one, 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 one to make the game go around faster. Yeah. Right? I mean, ever since Ticket to Ride, I've noticed and still harp on this that a modern game is a, a, a tenant and a good tenant of modern game design is where players either A, play simultaneously or constantly. So you're always engaged with the game. Yep. Or B, lots and lots and lots of short actions. You're constantly, you're going around taking turns. Those turns better be very, very small 
right? And if you want to have different kinds of turns, have different phases in your yep. game. There is a weird C alternative that I've seen, particularly in 18xx games, a game where you, there's nothing you can do on your when it's not your turn, but there's so much planning to do that every second you have when it's not your turn... You're engaged with the game, thinking and planning right. and counting things. Or Bonanza, it's not your turn, but you can engage with the player whose turn it is, even yep. when it's not your turn, right? Yep. But the point is, games where you're taking a t one player's turn and everyone else is taking a nap, that's not good for any genre of board game anymore in the current present day. Speaking of which, the as end. much as I want to play Samurai Swords slash Shogun slash Yakuza... It's pretty much Scott's taking his turn. Everyone just go eat. Well, that's true to some extent because there is before it's your the turn part. There's the bidding part, which is simultaneous. True. And then well, it's the it, combat phase. The combat phase is I put on the board the twenty fights I'm going to start. Right. And then we do all twenty fights. But in at least order. at least uh, also that's an old game. It is a very old game. Also, I would not if that was a new game. I wouldn't cut it any slack. No. Also, when you're fighting someone, at least they're also rolling D12s. Yeah. <laughs> Even though the other people at the table are sleeping, two people are rolling D12s together. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so it's not 100% sleep mode. So yeah, this game, like if you have kids or you're introducing like kind of basic, not super gamery friends. I say like if you don't have a Settlers, you don't have a Ticket to Ride, you don't have any of the basic Euro games, you can just, like get, get this one and save yourself the trouble of all the other ones. Yeah. But I think... Actually, any one of those other ones might be more fun than this. It's yeah, weird, I, I, I like, think it really. This has to be for people who are younger. Yeah, like this game, like it isn't bad. The problem is, it has like nothing exciting. It's just like a straight meh. Yeah. Right? Like I have, there's no flaw in its design. I can say, oh, the game's broken over there because it's not. Right. Yeah. It's like there's no like you know other than the, the slow turn taking thing. It's like. And actually, the, like once you know how to play the game, the turns go real quick too. Like it's not even that yeah, big a concern. Yeah, it's easy to learn. The rules weren't written. There weren't any. You know, I don't. Uh, maybe there was one or two things in the rule book we might have questioned, but nothing huge and devastating like other games. Like I can't find any fault in it that's like devastatingly bad. There's just nothing about it that's really great that makes me want to play it. Yeah, like I never need to play it again, and I feel like I've plumbed the fullness of its depths. After two plays, for After sure. one play. Uh, after one play, yeah, but the two plays was like a confirmation, like, doom. Yes, yeah, I, this, I, the second play was not different from the first play. Yep, and the fact that you played without me and you feel the same way confirms my feelings. So, yeah, yeah. if you have kids, like, or you play with people who are not gamer, you're like, this, this is a good game. Otherwise, like, it's not for us. <laughs> This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music.